Good afternoon. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of uh, the Athens City Planning Commission. It's October 4th, 2007, and it is 2.31. Uh, three members of the commission are present. That is a quorum. Uh, Mrs. Cohn and Mr. Konishigi are both absent today. Um, if you plan to say anything, we take sworn uh, statements, and if you uh, plan to say anything, we stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear and or affirm that whatever you say will be the truth? Say, I do. Okay, thank you. Our first case is um, 0708, and it's um, Lance Rep here for final approval on University Estates. Um, there are three cases, three related, or there were four. One is withdrawn, but there's also 0708A, 0708B, uh, and then 0708C was withdrawn from consideration today. So we have the uh, two files here anyway, two files of information about um, university estates, the various phases. Do, do you want to start? Do you have a presentation you want to make, Lance, or anything? If you, I thought that's why you came. Well, I know it by heart now. <laughs> this is the third time that I've done this, but uh, my name is Lance Rapp with the University of States, and I'm here for the final presentations on the uh, residential phase two and the plat for phase two and the villas at High Point Village. Uh, which is phase two, a continuation of what we are doing in phase one. Uh, as you know, I've made multiple visits to the Planning Commission trying to share the information and give you updates as we went along. I've also been to the Shade Tree Commission, attended several raised staff meetings, the Disability Commission. Steve and I have met uh, several times. We met uh, twice with Burgess and Nipel and a recent meeting with the mayor. So I think everyone is familiar with the overall uh, concept of what we're doing. Today, what I would like to ask you to do is re review and approve uh, these on a, with a con conditional basis, uh, pending the Title 27 reviews that are in progress by Burgess and Naples, uh, similar to what we did on Grand Vista when it went through. Uh, I ask, also ask that, uh, because of the time frame that we're in, that uh, we there's an optional public hearing, and I ask you to waive that, uh, just so I can stay online with council to get through by the end of the year. Uh, we'd like to get these all through at one time, so that when we start our earthwork and utilities, uh, our crews are working. You know, it's very efficient to do that way. Plus, it gives me a chance to keep all of my guys working all winter long. Um, I guess the first thing I'll discuss is the plat, and uh, each of you should have a in your packet. But phase two is is uh, basically this circled area here, the single family homes, um, where we plan on putting the clubhouse and uh, condos, which is part of the old plat road. We're going to add those in on phase two just to have those platted. And then a small section down here on Armitage Road. And then they also, uh, the new plat will consist of the new Armitage Road, which is down at the bottom. And if I understand right, when we file this plat and it goes through your commission and goes on to council, at the same time when I go to council, I will file for the vacation of the old Armitage Road, which is a council function. Um, it's my understanding that those will follow along through council together so that after council approves the new plat, they will vacate the old road at the same time, which I think would be after the third reading plus 30 days of the uh, ordinance. Um, and the rest of the, uh, you want to go over the plat? Or I had a Is that the easiest? Yeah, I think so. I'll just go. I had a question on one part of it. I might put these back in there and didn't put them back in the same order. I thought when you had made your uh, comments to us a couple the last couple meetings that you had said that from the March 20 plat that we have and the big map you have, 
there was a, a change in this village phase two, you dropped the building or something, or do you still have this cul-de-sac going out? Because you look like you're on this, you got them. So you're on the next over to the villas. You want to stay on the well, residential? No, I saw. Isn't I, this the? Maybe I started on the wrong one. But I started this, on the flat. This is, is this the one you're on? Okay. You're, well, he started with the. I started with the flat. And the the flat. And the this, okay. He started with the green. He started with green. the green file. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> You're That's in the green condos. Well, I can't help but be here. We're confused. We got so many pieces of paper. I had them all on my living room floor, and it worked better that way. I could spread them all out and look at them. So. Looking at You're looking at that one first. That great big one. It's so big. It takes up all the room. It's obviously the first page is the signature page. Uh, the second page in the green shows you where the outer uh, section. <coughs> we Refresh my memory. What this is? I know what this is, but what was the lower part in this one down here? This is nothing right now. It, it's uh, going to be part of the, uh, the apartments, but, but it's we was land. land. Okay. Yeah. All right. The other parts here is where the clubhouse and the uh, the club condos go. Okay. We want to go ahead and plat those, even though the road's already in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we want to plat those. And then uh, it shows the dotted line here is the old Armory Road. And then the new Armory Road follows along and, and hooks into the existing old Armory Road that goes over to the uh, city's well fields and stuff. Okay. So, so that consists of what the plat will be. Why does this one, I guess, do these gray shaded areas don't necessarily follow property lines, or do they? This is kind of cut out, you know, that little uh, thing is cut actually, out. Actually, this section right here is WATH. That's already been platted. Okay, they own that. Yeah. Okay, that, all right. That area here is mm -hmm. that's already on I'd the old plant. I'd forgotten that. I couldn't, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason this road comes out a little bit is uh, eventually we're going to put this roundabout in. So we left extra property for that. And uh, at that time, then we have to go back and change this section of the plaque. Any questions on the plaque? Andy Stone was out at uh, about 12, 31 o'clock today and inspected the Army Road and uh, gave his approval to it all. He has a couple things uh, on the drainage that he wants to talk with Ray about, but other than that, the road service and everything he was pleased with. Those are just those things. In this upper part, upper part here, there was, in the future there would be a continuation of that one. Yeah. And I believe Mayor would know that well, they turn around. What you had asked at the last meeting, this will be a road, and then this is only 15 foot, but that's a, just a service line for the water that goes up through there. Is it, lot 131, is that a proposed green space area or is it a No, it was designated as a, uh, I think, B1, you know, commercial area, commercial area. Yeah. We don't have any plans for that yet, but we had to do this. Right. To put the road so we thought we might as well just encompass that. It will actually be a road to the outside of all this.
What's the difference between commercial and village square? I forget. Well, down here it says commercial, and there it says village square. And you said this Same. is. It's, it's just the area, that's what we're going to call it. Mm -hmm. The zoning is commercial. Mm -hmm. What happened to the golf course? Still, still searching. <laughs> Okay. So you don't really need a clubhouse tree. Mm -hmm. How do you get, if somebody would buy lot 47 and the road ends, how would the fire engine back up? We will, like we've done on uh, other uh, roads that we've had Put a like circle that. there. Put a, a circle to turn road. around the road. Okay. By the fire engine. Okay. You have walks. I see you have walks in here. Five walks. At least it says walk. Oh. Any got any questions of him on this thing? Well, it's the one down there. It's got a twelve on it in the circle. So that's a new lot twelve. No. Uh, those are actually tax or parcel. It tells you over here that. Well, are we including this as newly platted? Yes. So we got to have a lot designation, right? Right. So what is it? Uh, I haven't found it yet. Let's put that in. It's. Is that bad? It's 82 over here. We were calling it 4B. I don't know that they labeled it. I don't see it on any of them. Well, it doesn't mix follow these because it's it's so far away from the rest of it it's on another numbering scheme Is that it? okay yep. 83 yeah all the way to the back of this thing too many pages there here 83 it it says 80 well I, I guess because eventually we get a mile that has this this place what you're planning in two different areas because they're not connected right right mm -hmm. so and the, the final shouldn't thing. show this because that's been uh, right now it's just an easement. Abandoned. it's just an easement that the city has for emergency access right mm -hmm. right now and that's I, I would have to say that the mylar is the same as what you're looking at these are just copies. Okay. I have the mylar because after this meeting, I was just going to pay it to the engineer. I just pushed down that as an easement instead of a street. Mm -hmm. Okay. The streets have the. Yeah, this is the easement. Yeah. The different style. Yeah. Yeah. The different style line there. These were the uh, plans that staff reviewed, right? Yeah. And so any changes that they had made, like on water or sewer easements or where proposed lines are going to be, those will be in the final. Yeah. No, that, I thought you said the other day that they were still the engineers. Right. When, we get, to the, yeah. when we get to the rest of that, I'll be able to explain that uh, sanitary part of it. This is just, just the plot here. Okay. 
Well, the pot usually has the easement for water and sewer. Normally. We've got to, for the water line here, and we had it. Well, they wouldn't have finalized the, at least the sanitary easement yet. <coughs> no. We're still working on that. Well, I'm trying to think. Our goal is to get the sanitary back into the easement and the roadway easement. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I'll explain when I get to that other side. But it's correct in that it's lots 81 through 130. 130 is up there. 130, yeah. 81 is. Here and then 82, then down there is 83, <laughs> and then up here and back up in 84. What's 131? This is kind of this one. I think 131 was in all these things, but that was left out of it. That's the commercial. That's that letter. Well, I thought it was just the commercial down here that this wasn't shown in plat two in the second phase. I thought it followed this line here. Well, this is phase two residential, but does that? Yeah, that one that, doesn't show That doesn't show it. No. Well, 131 is the water tower. I know, but I didn't think that was in what we were doing now. I thought this was just the residential. Well, as I understand it, you wanted <coughs> 81, 82, 83, and 131 also platted. Platted, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I understood that the plat went through and, and you voted on that mm -hmm. and then we talked about the okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, since the village phase two was not in this planning, it could have been either way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this is residential phase two. Mostly residential, but there are some that are already. This area in here, I think, is B. B, that's B, I know, but yeah, that's, this, this is what I'm saying. It doesn't R3 show it. In, it's, it's actually, mm -hmm. I think it's an R3. Mm -hmm. There is, there's a sheet in here that has it on it. I just lost it again. There, here they are. Yeah. R3 and B3. Yeah. R3, B3. This one down here, 83, the new 83, is an R3, right? R3, yeah. Actually, it might have been the opposite side of that was it? An open space before. Mm -hmm. That's I, where those golf villas. Oh, okay. Remember, I had each building shaded, mm -hmm. okay. and when he redid it, he put, right. he put blocks there instead of okay. each building. Right. Mm -hmm. sure you yeah, you have one, but it's hard to find. <laughs> okay. So mm -hmm. what we have, according to Steve, then is that walnut court is slightly over the thousand foot maximum for a cul-de-sac. It's a thousand and sixty feet. So that would have to be a variance. Okay. And that 90, lots 91 through 96 and 101 through 107 and 110 and 111 
to uh, outside of a three to one width, 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 width to depth ratio. Two ways to look at that, I guess, is, is one, that'd be easier probably to apply for a variance. And the other thing you got to remember is the backside of these lots aren't usable anyways. Right. Per se, mm -hmm. they get down pretty steep. Right, it's all <coughs> open space. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's saying this that, is a uh, paper. not sure the plan is flat. He's saying the plan here. Four foot sidebar. I can show you on here. My engineer drew an arrow with a line that says four foot, and it should say five foot. On this. Right there. Yeah. On this package, it goes five foot, but for some reason, I didn't catch it. Okay. And then the broad move toward that. Oh, oh, yeah. That That's the, we'll have to do it. They have to have some way to Cold turn. Side yeah. Mm -hmm. Right in the road bond for Broadmoor, Walnut, Posey. You currently, where does your current road end? Current road ends here. Okay. However, uh, in the estimate I gave you, this is changing to a roundabout. Roundabout. On the one drawing. More cost there than and just that kind of stuff that was in the old natural plan. If we do the variance in there, is that a recommendation? That has to be included in the recommendation. Mm -hmm. Okay. That what's going on? Make a motion to approve the phase two university estates plat as presented with the following uh, variances or changes that need to be made. First, according to Athens City Code 2105.10c, the cul de sac of Walnut Court needs a variance because it's 60 feet longer than what's permitted. Second variance would be the Athens City Code 2104.06, maximum depth width of three to one. These exceeded lots 91 through lots 96, 101 through 107, and lots 110 and 111. Third one is that it's not a variance, it's that the Plats should be changed to indicate five foot sidewalks and that the end of Broadmoor Court will be a cul-de-sac rather than a hammerhead and contingent upon receipt of road bond and any sureties for water and sewer. Anything else in there? <laughs> Sir, a sec, would you repeat Second. that? <laughs> <laughs> you don't really want me to. <laughs> All right, now it's time for discussion, which we've been doing. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Are you ready? I had to understand what I was going to vote. <laughs> Are you ready to vote? Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. All oh, aye. Okay, put that in the Okay, in the green envelope, we'll just follow up with the, uh, the residential part of that. Um, get my map up. You need to keep your residential, just the residential part. Uh, I just put the one away that I wanted up here. Is that what's called Homestead Court? It's yeah. called wood, that walnut and all that other stuff. Walnut and Homestead, that's a residential. That's homestead. <laughs> yeah. okay. This is the uh, single family homes. Coming off the of UE, they'll be around about, you come up. Um, this is kind of a color markup. But all these lots are wood. Uh, we show the brown just so you can see the lots better. But, uh, you know, there'll be 40, 
766 by or 66 270 foot by 150 lots. Um, two cul-de-sacs. Um, all the utilities will be underground. Uh, I've been to the shade tree and disabilities. Columbia Gas has approved the, uh, the crossings of the roads. Uh, the zoning in the, is in place. Um, and if you switch to the, I think probably what you've got is more of a utility plan. Uh, our water, cable, uh, telephone, everything will be in the right of ways. Uh, sanitary, uh, this first drawing is what we brought to the city staff meeting. and. Uh, after discussion with uh, Ray and Nick and, and Scott and everybody in the, in the sanitary department, we wanted to review uh, some different alternatives to that. So they've asked us to, to uh, look at several items, and Ray's group is also going to look at some different things in the city, how things are done. One of the issues uh, is that on our original plan, we had two lift stations. One at uh, the very front, 682, and then one clear at the back uh, at the end of our property, close to uh, where the tracks cross to go to the city wells, for, uh, and it would tie into Courier Street Station. So that was our t two in the master plan. <coughs> As we developed this property, and uh, lost my other. One of the problems that, that this site presents is, this is kind of the halfway point in terms of gravity. Everything from here goes this way, everything from here will go that way and go out and go out the lift station there. Well, that works for everything coming this way and everything on this side of the road. However, for here and here, there's going to have to be a smaller lift station that pumps it back up to get back to these two systems. One of the questions that came up was the ownership of those, and that's the part that's in discussion. Originally, our idea was to have the homeowners association own the lift station. After discussion uh, on both our sides, I'm not sure that's the best way to do it. So that's when Ray uh, said he would have his people look into how, what might, what other alternatives are there. Because I, we all agreed that the city should have control of that lift station. Now whether it's an assessment to us or, or on the bills or however it's done, uh, that's the part we need to make to work out. Um, I think the other issue that we had that we agreed we were going to change is that we were running these across between lots to get back to uh, University <laughs> Estates down here. <clears throat> And there's a 20-foot easement between houses, 10-foot on each side. But that 20-foot is actually a building easement. So that doesn't mean somebody can't put their uh, air conditioner, their shrubs, and all that kind of stuff closer to the line than 10-foot on each side. And one of the uh, concerns from uh, Nick Joseph was that once all that's planted, you can't get through there like, you know, you don't have 20-foot. You might only have a foot or two. So there was some concern of that. So they're exploring that, uh, but that'll be all part of the administrative stuff that we do with the city. Um, I don't know, Ray, is there, can you add anything that I miss? No, that's it's kind of In old. a nutshell, that's what we're trying to look at is a, is a more effective way to handle the wastewater here um, so that we don't run close to the houses trying to minimize the number of lift stations out there because um, we don't really want to get involved in operating another half dozen or so lift stations because uh, it's fairly expensive. Um, so we're trying to find other alternatives. The water, uh, water just comes off the way of water and that's fairly easy. Uh, and same way with the rest of the utilities, uh, street lights. Uh, sidewalks, uh, like I mentioned, this shows four foot, uh, should say five foot, and that and follows the code. Um, I think that's 
That's about it. If anybody's got any other questions. I think we worked through most of the other infrastructure issues out there. Right. I don't know. Do you have any questions? What is your pleasure here? <clears throat> what are we supposed to do? What do you want us to do here? You want final approval for this too? Is that right? I would like final approval for this with the same conditions as we talked about before. Oh. Because the first case just really changed the master plan of University of States to add the phase two, right? I think that's what. Well, I, mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. your 08 first one is just a, and B. a change okay. to the approval of the overall, right, but master plan for the whole University of States by adding that. I mean, is this redundant that when we add? They've already approved. If you've approved it, you've approved so the other thing. Flat. You've approved it. Or you the approved the watch. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sure we'll have to yeah. vote on each one. So yeah. uh, B has already been approved. Yeah. A is what we haven't done. Right. Yeah. So there isn't anything. A, the first thing was took care of that, those two things. This thing here you need to do. Let's put that one away. Let's get this one put away. This is, uh, this goes in here. I'm gonna get my packets mixed up here. This is the addition to what is the, we've already have part of these built, right? right. This is the other. Phase one and mm -hmm. the clubhouse for mm -hmm. the entire phase one and two is already. Mm -hmm. uh, These phases one and two in every place get confusing. We don't know which phase we're in and what place. <laughs> uh, again, with this, we'll continue on uh, the same buildings that we had in phase one. Uh, it also will be a member of the homeowners association. Will have its own condo association, and our architectural review board. Uh, the bond is already in place for the Altamont Drive. Um, all the buildings are state approved and built to code. Um, I have nine to 12 buildings of four units per building depending on the final soil analysis. Uh, this is the layout that we think we're probably going to end up with unless Burgess and Eiffels and our engineers find another flat piece of ground somewhere that, that we don't know. But uh, these will have uh, in your plans, which is black and white, uh, they do show five foot sidewalks on these, so it was just an oversight before. Um, the only difference in, well, the last two times I've come here, I've showed you the loop road that we're putting in. It's not really a road, it's a driveway, and that. Uh, was in place of the cul-de-sac that we originally were going to take out there because after the soils uh, people and Burgess and our engineers got looking that that wasn't feasible to run that out there. Uh, 
uh, I went to the Shade Tree Commission and the uh, disabilities. I think one of the main things the disabilities asked for is if you'll see this short little driveway here that leads back. There's two of them. They asked that uh, they felt that a sidewalk needed to run around there. And as within the uh, the residential and this also we have the rolled curbs and uh, it was their opinion that at the intersections those don't qualify for uh, disabilities ramp so we're going to have to notch those and put a approved ramp in there and not because all, all these show is the rolled curb so those are, i think were the two main things that we talked about that uh, had to be changed Again, the zoning's in place. It's just a continuation of the uh, the other phase. Do these these are things that are stick. These are where they ask you to break the concrete. Is that right? So it's not solid concrete. Is that yeah, what those this are? This is just the. This is no, actually. No, but these be, was it, yeah, or, mm -hmm. that was to break the solid concrete. And was that planning? Planning. Yeah, yeah. So this is really its address is here. This is not another street that no. you put in. This is where they asked to continue. Turn the things side around, side. yeah. And this is not quite the same one that you have. And this, does this go out all the way now? It this stops, way it stops stop here? right here with this thing. And then this, this has uh, been vacated. But when it comes back online, it hooks into UE Boulevard down here. But it will eventually come back? Right. Right, right. right now, this you'd have to turn around here and go back, right? right. One of the things Andy is looking at today while he's <laughs> out there is part of the thing we agreed with with uh, with the mayor was I'm sure this thing show up right we had agreed to put a road in a temporary road during construction yeah. while the bill was going on and that road actually Good. starts what, right, right there, there and goes up and comes up yeah. And that's where we use for construction and mm -hmm. uh, also an extra emergency exit. That road has been built and gravel, and Andy's going to take a look at that today. And that was part of our previous agreement, but I want to let you know we completed that. Yeah, I think the owners of all these buildings through 12 probably don't want all the construction traffic going by them for the next uh, couple of years. The first five buildings have been very accommodating to the construction that is going on. So the sooner we can get that thing going. Uh, now the right of way is all Alt Lot Drive. This is this overview loop is private. Right. And would you have water and sewer easements to get to buildings 13, 15, 17? Yeah. Right. Once you get the final design. Why not show it? It doesn't show in here. There's another yeah. drawing in here. So well, you drawings. gave me too many drawings then. He's <laughs> got a lot of drawings. I'll bring this over to show you. This shows your sanitary okay. and water. Fire hydrants are, where are the rents on? Right here. Yeah. Within the, yeah. Uh, back in the air. So there's another one down there. <laughs> One thing I had we were looking for is this sidewalk right behind the curb. Uh, yeah. the back you'll still have the concrete here mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but normally your, when your sidewalks back to the right-of-way line it, the grade of the sidewalk continues on through the driveway and then the driveway slips off so then you don't have to put you don't have to be concerned about putting ADA ramps at every driveway mm -hmm. 
that's just a matter of us agreeing to do it and do it that way. Isn't it? I mean, take, it's, look at it and see if it works because that, we're worry. not looking at elevations here, and that may mm -hmm. mess up the elevation. In this drawing of these buildings, if you go out, if you go out to the, the back, whichever is the back, is the back where the garage is, the only way in and out is there's through the garage door, is that right? Yeah. There's no other way to go. You'd have to or walk around the front. Except for that first building on that, the left, when you enter all the buildings. Yeah, the one I don't windows. like. That just that wouldn't work on the first building because of the turn. Yeah, and that's what you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Questions of him. Is this all that you're going to be putting up in there, or will there be more uh, of this 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 particular this style, area, this yeah. type, you know, and and cost and that sort of thing? So this is would be completed once you get these in here. There's two other areas that we're we're exploring uh, as a result of. Not going forward with the performance, but this is purely that. We, we feel that if this continues to sell the way it is, since we're not putting those apartments there, we possibly could put some more of these in this lot five area. Mm -hmm. It's just it's hooked onto the street right at the same intersection. Same intersection. That's just a, you know, a thought we had. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to do anything? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that we <coughs> approve the plat for High Point Village Phase Two uh, as, as the final PUD. It's a PUD. PUD. Okay. Mm -hmm. Subject to successfully getting through Title Twenty Seven. Twenty Seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plan development ordinance. We have to do that no matter what. We have to do that no matter what, just it's good to have it on there as a reminder. Mm -hmm. Second. You second it? All right. Is there any other, other discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It's approved. Ah, where's my paper? Can I ask a question on the variances, Mary? Yeah. Do you take care of the variances? So they'll get our our motion, so they'll get yes. Okay. Uh, so I think the other one on here was uh, cross. You'll see it's crossed out. That o, o seven o eight C has been withdrawn, and we had a communication about that yesterday. That that was done. And uh, okay, now our next thing is. Let me put these away because I'm getting confused as usual. Too many pieces of paper here. Took one away. Hmm? I, took one away I know you took one away, but I took it home with me and already used it once. Okay, you can have that. Mm -hmm. Our next, uh, we're at number three, communications, and uh, the communication we received about this is we. Oh, oh, wait. I, okay, I'm sorry. I got my papers mixed up. Okay. Oh, sorry, Mr. Thu. 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 Case 0709. This is a minor subdivision in the plains. Where is this? Do we have this here? Any file on this? No. Okay. Who's? You want to come and in, in, tell us about you? Well, you were here before. I know that. Um, mm -hmm. Just here today to uh, ask for a variance to split the, a lot I have in the Plains. It's uh, 7 West 2nd Street. 
Um, there's actually a four bedroom house and a triplex on the lot. And I really want to make the house have a yard and uh, make it its own little world compared to the triplex. Mm -hmm. um, the triplex has, these are, these are both rentals, but um, the house has children and they need a yard and stuff. And uh, the triplex, they're just single people. So I feel they don't really need the yard and I want to put a fence up. And uh, I know the lot's not big enough, mm -hmm. but uh, there is lots next door to me across across um, Second Street and the alley that's on the back side of this lot mm -hmm. that are smaller actually than what I'm planning on doing. Where did you say this was? The, uh, was 7 it? West 2nd Street in the Plains. Oh, okay. And the um, triplex is actually the uh, <coughs> okay. address is 7 and a half West 2nd mm -hmm. Street in the Plains. Yeah, because I don't have that with me. but. We're... Now, okay. currently your lot fronts on West 2nd Street? West 2nd Street and the, the alley, I think it doesn't have a name Okay. because it's an alley, but... Is it an improved alley or a uh, gravel they, or... It's semi-gravel dirt, semi -gravel dirt. <laughs> but uh, they use it. There's the, you know, it's, it's used as a driveway for several places. The, uh, the lot next to it, the lodge and this other uh, Crollo is really smaller than what I planned to, to do. These two. I have to apologize. I got mixed up on this. I was in another meeting last, about a, two weeks ago, and it was somewhat similar to this, and I thought I was in the same place looking at the same thing. It's in the plains, but it's not the yeah. same thing at all. So. Housing authority thing. Well, our minimum mm -hmm. lot size is twenty thousand. Well, it's sewer. Is it, where? How does it, the second lot get the sewer? Um, it goes right through. Actually, on the side of the lot, they just both connect, and it goes to uh, uh, Second Street. Second Street. Between the alley and Second Street. No, it actually no. goes um, right in the lot. In it's the lot. Alongside the, mm -hmm. yeah. There's parking on both sides. Both lots in the west and yeah, well, the current, the current lot is mm -hmm. 6,000 square feet, and he wants to subdivide it into a 3,500 square foot lot and a 2,500 square lot. Now, you're saying, Steve, that the permitted minimum is 20,000? I thought. Because there's no curb and gutter on the street. No curb and gutter, but there is a sewer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Joseph from 8,000 to 20,000. Planes, do any of the lots really meet the requirement? I don't think so. They're all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the uh, Crollo lot and the lodge are a lot smaller than, especially the Crollo lot next to it. <coughs> and then the, the Rowan lot this next right to here. it, also small. And that right one there. isn't true. Street. So it's not that much different than the other lots in the area, just configuration. The configuration is just there, long and narrow, and his is we're close to being square. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the only question, I mean, one of my concerns is the, is the access to lot, to the lot. B, 92B, is an unimproved alley that I don't know. Do you have anything from the township trustees? Is, do they have? Are they going to I know, plow it? I know they, they plow it, and every now and then they gravel it, but that's the only thing I know they do. They do okay. plow it, though. Mm -hmm. Are there other houses that face on that alley? Yeah, yeah there's actually two, uh, there's two triplexes and some mobile homes and another house 
on farther. <laughs> this is this one in Athens Township here or Dover. I never can keep them straight where the line goes. I think this is Athens Township. I think that's Athens Township. Mm -hmm. Is that Athens Street. Township this section? So. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know where. Where's the? I know where you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. I've driven down those things that road. I mean, from the standpoint of what you said of put, putting up a fence, I mean, if you own, it's two rental properties, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no zoning or anything. You can put up a fence. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think the worry I, some I have is that we're creating 2,500-foot lots that can, somebody someday can sell. And then right. do we really want to do continue to do that or encourage it? And my answer really to that's not particularly. No. Because it's just... I think that's what happened with the <coughs> that little tiny lot that says Crollo T A family. Yeah. Um, I think they sold that for like thirty thousand dollars, but you know. Yeah, but somehow they got a minor lot split. I don't know when, because right. they also own a hundred feet by a hundred and twenty. Yeah. Right next to it, but they split it off and then sold it off. And so let's see, they can split off three more of those. Like <laughs> yeah, you can do it three or four more times. Okay? <laughs> yeah, because that, that lot's only 27. Yes, but, you know, I always get concerned about the planes. I just don't. Well, I'd want to see yeah. something from the fire department. Yeah, the I Township do trustees or something. Mm -hmm. that, and, and, and water and sewer that indicates that, this, that they've got the right easements and everything like that. Because it's just getting awfully chopped up. But as you say, the buildings exist. Oh, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's got separate water mm -hmm. meters. Uh, yeah. you know. Well, it isn't that he's asking for something that somebody else doesn't have or wouldn't right, be because it's right in the middle of the whole thing. So. That's why I'd ask about if there were other houses mm -hmm. <laughs> right on the yeah. unnamed alley. <laughs> Just because I wanted to make sure it was somebody was taking some responsibility for it. I mean, I, I think I'd feel more comfortable if I got something from just served by the Plains Volunteer Fire Department. I believe so. Yeah, I'd feel more That's comfortable. Great. I have something from them and something from the uh, Water and Sewer District, Plains Water Sewer District, that they don't, have any, don't need any easements if this split happens or anything like that. They're okay. And then something from the township trustees that they want to plow it, or just, once that gets into another separate ownership, then when you buy it, you always assume, well, oh, yeah, the township maintains yeah, this. And I, I've been down that road. I actually bought it like this, and uh, they uh, I've never plowed the road or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They've already, always taken care of it so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like some indication from them that they're going to continue to do that. So otherwise, somebody will be back. back yeah, the planning commission is complaining. I, I think it, it must be a legal street because there's mailboxes on the street. Um, but it's going to be hard to give it an app street address mm -hmm. with, with no name for it. Probably has a name. Do. Yeah, I don't believe there is. A, I don't, I'm not sure. It's the alley in the plains. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Might check with the post office. If they've got mailboxes there. Then. Yeah, there's mailboxes there. Yeah. Maybe there's a name for it. Either there's a name for it or it's there or they're still going by some route number. Yeah, well, the house number seven and a half West Second Street. What do you want to do? Continue the, this? Is that what you're doing? The triplex. Well, I'm saying if we could get those others, I'm willing to consider it. I'm not real happy about it. But when I look at the right, I'll drive through there and I'll look at the rest of the area. I mean, yeah. it's not like it doesn't exist. But I think what's going to happen is where people put two buildings on it, and the, the more and the we approve of that, the more splits there's going to be. It's just going to snowball, and all of a sudden you're going to have all of it. That's, you'll never be able to change it back to anything else. Right. Mm -hmm. 
even if they wake up out there and decide they want some zoning. I think the last split was with these lots was like 2000. One was 99, I believe. So, uh, it's been a while. It's not too long. Is that a motion? Yeah, I just would move to continue and ask for additional information as I've outlined in okay. the order. Okay. So How do you pronounce your last name? Thu. 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 Yeah. Thu. So, thank you. He just a motion to continue second, to yeah. keep it on the agenda. Okay, you want you approve the yeah. continuation. All right. Okay. Uh, now commu you. communications Thank about the. Uh, this was. Um, here, resolution number R ten o seven about the uh, request for us to amend the zoning code concerning the municipal parking facility and it's 500 feet from the property line question and it says we're supposed to talk about this and I bet there are people in here well, who want to talk. <laughs> I guess the first thing we have to decide as yeah. a commission is it's mm -hmm. optional to have a public hearing mm -hmm. on this because the city council whatever recommendation we make to it is requiring if it's a change to the code has to have a public hearing on it. so do Did we want to schedule a public hearing on it? i guess is the first thing and then i will take input from Did property yeah. owners that's the route they want us to go or not. didn't somebody didn't we schedule some public hearings last time or did I dream that? We talked about about having them, but we didn't do it. We then decided didn't. to not have them. Those were those were the ones the were, were the, Yeah. Okay. Well, we decided also we the didn't. public hearings for the two annexations. Yeah, and we didn't have to that, have them. We okay. Not to have those public hearings on the zonings because council's going to have them. They're already scheduled. Yeah. Okay. Do we have to? Do we want to have a public hearing on this? Well, I think I just threw my paper clip in your coffee or whatever you're drinking. <laughs> it's coffee. It's not good. But they're good. It's either it's there or under your anyway. foot. But it just flew that way and didn't splash. But then again, <laughs> don't want to kill the mayor by having him swallow paper clips. Uh -huh. Haven't we had public hearings on this question in the past? <laughs> I don't think on <laughs> not the this particular one, but on the. I mean, I the history as I remember it was that way back, for some reason, after the parking garage got built, we decided, or another planning commission yeah. decided, mm -hmm. and another council decided that we would as a city allow the municipal parking garage to serve as the parking from a zoning standpoint of uptown businesses and they established 500 feet as the rule and that was never defined other than 500 okay. feet so what was happening was not every business in the downtown district is within 500 feet and you could go over to Congress Street where the, what, I'm not sure what's there now a shoe cafe once it was a restaurant another time etc mm -hmm. you could mm -hmm. almost get to the tip of that property if you went mm -hmm. right at the edge of the parking garage and you use every area of the parking garage to get your 500 mm -hmm. feet and lot wise you could just about cover everything mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and then through the discussions uh, when we went through the zoning code that's I forget what year we did this. 03. 03? Okay. And made recommendations to council. We said, let's get rid of this 500 feet for the downtown area because it's a weird calculation. And, and I, my thought at that time, it was an arbitrary thing of 500 feet. I don't know. Could be 600, could be 800, could be anything. Uh, and I think also in 2003, we recognized that the parking garage is not was not having the problems it was having before once it went to metered parking because it used to be that the parking garage was full at 10 o'clock in the morning most mornings and remained that until probably four o'clock or three in the afternoon 
but that almost invariably uh, the parking garage was not full and could serve. In fact, we made the, the one half of the, the first entry as you go in metered limited to two hours to do turnover. We did that because businesses wanted that and did the rest of it up to 10 hours and was, I think, still continued not to have too much trouble. And, you know, one of the things the city could do is if it started to do it is make both of the two floor, you know, all of the first floor to our limit and to accommodate businesses if we don't. If they're talking, you know, I don't know that if in, in the recommendation that we made to council extending the business district to Carpenter Street on court uh, and going back, I think as long as, as long as current lines as I recall, because it which cuts through some things mm -hmm. on the uh, east side of that. Um, I don't know if those businesses will use the parking garage or not. I mean, nobody knows for sure. I think the only thing I've heard expressed by the community in general has been that if the upstairs of all, if more of them get turned into rental and they have parking on site, all that's going to get devoted to get the rental income and those that may currently have some degree of uh, parking for their customers uh, would not and would be forced to use the parking garage. But I think it depends upon if you're owning that business and own the building or if you're renting it and trying to maximize your money and don't care if it's vacant below because if the business doesn't succeed, they are going to going to put the business there. So I, you know, I haven't really heard a real good, compelling reason to to put this arbitrary 500 feet back in. And maybe a public hearing would do that. But, uh, I don't know. That's where I am. Well, I'm kind. Of, I was just sitting here wondering because the uh, the time period we had for response on this was. Uh, if a public hearing is appropriate, the time period may be extended to 90 days, which would have expired on September 18th, roughly. So I don't know what that, you know, not being familiar with how the process works in terms of the recommendations, I don't know if that means that we're in violation or, or that we can't send a recommendation now, or what does that mean? Steve, do you have any idea? Then, then why do we yeah. have it? Who sent it to us? Council. <laughs> yeah. Somebody thought we needed to on, do something. On June 18th, yeah. Well, it's been, I mean, it's been here before, and we've talked about it a little bit and didn't do anything. I don't know. It was, Deborah, can you, can you address that? <laughs> did, did you want us to do that again, to, to send a recommendation? Was it? Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to send us something, okay, I think folks would be happy to hear your recommendation. But you don't need, you can go ahead and do which one anyway without it, since we missed the 90 days. We could, mm -hmm. and I don't know what my committee members would want to do. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead if you, you want to just introduce yourself and say what you think about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mike Smeltzer, 18 West State, Athens. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote a summary because this meeting went a, long, a little longer than I thought. Mm -hmm. I was going to have it read in, so I'll just read it real quick. Uh, I'm not in favor of having the northern block of court rezoned to B2D in the event that the 500 foot radius parking garage requirement is also approved. Uh, consistent with the Planning Commission's prior recommendations, as I understand it, at least three times, <laughs> and in, in, uh, also consistent with the accepted Athens Comprehensive <coughs> Plan, please vote to reaffirm your original position that all four blocks, including the northernmost, which is currently zone B3, be zone B2D and treat all of the uptown Court Street area the same. We're all part of the downtown, it seems obvious. 
Uh, in the event the northern block is rezoned to B2D with the 500 foot rule in place, it is clearly a stripping of property rights as B2D is more restrictive than the current B3. So I think that, that would, I guess that's, that's very clear. And with none of the parking advantages enjoyed by those in B2D, so that's in the event that you do put uh, that 500 foot rule in, it would appear a legal recourse would be inevitable uh, from the property owners. Reducing property rights is synonymous with reducing property value. So it seems like a pretty clear-cut, tough thing to, to do. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Somebody else? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is David Reeser, and uh, together with partners, I own the property on North Court that is currently occupied by the public defender, as well as, I think, two two-bedroom apartments and <clears throat> I guess uh, my position is in agreement uh, with Mr. Smelcher that we just want to be treated as other as property owners on Court Street uh, right now over 50 percent of our lot is devoted to parking uh, to satisfy the commercial parking requirements for the public defender's office um, we would like to be able to offer the public defender and other future tenants the uh, ability to expand or to uh, you know be able to increase uh, the, their area that they occupy we uh, would like to imp be able to improve our property uh, as we believe is our, our right and our intent when we purchase the property uh, so we hope that uh, it's kind of a this whole thing seems very convoluted to me but uh, we just want to be treated as as our neighbor 50 yards to the south of us uh, who is able to avail themselves of the use or the allowable use of the city parking garage to satisfy their commercial parking requirement. Okay. Thank you. Just right there. <laughs> I was. Yeah. I'd like to add one more thing. Mike Smeltzer, 18 West State. Uh, I started this process back in January, uh, 10 months ago. And it occurred to me as I was sitting there, I remembered that it has, in fact, been back here for a different reason. It was back to the Planning Commission with regard mm -hmm. to a bulk height control, mm -hmm. uh, okay. reducing that height. I'm a little, I'm novice at, uh, at the political scene, but it really seemed a bit uh, negligent at best, deceptive at worst, because it was presented to us, and I think to you all, that in the event that bulk height control was lowered, then we would go ahead and, and agree to, to oblige me and on behalf of the other property owners to go ahead and rezone that B2D. Mm -hmm. And they kind of got their cake and now they're eating it too. The bulk height is lowered, mm -hmm. but we have not been um, given that, you know, so all the, the property owners are three blocks to the south of us mm -hmm. have suffered a, you know, they're, they're uh, restricted a bit, and yet we have not gotten our, uh, our end of B2, or our end of court zone to B2D. And that seems, you know, like I say, I'm a novice at this. I didn't, I didn't know to make that a contingency uh, when I came and appeared in front of you. And uh, I don't know if that's even possible, but it seemed a little odd that that was the case. So I'd just like to remind the commission of that yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. My memory is a little different on that in respect that it was the downtown district only that was affected with the height because the current right. downtown district is allowed to be, is it six stories? Six. Six stories or seven. Six stories. Six and, B, and B3 is limited at 45 feet, isn't it? 45 feet, three and a half. Right. So Correct, we Mr. went to the lowering it, but we said for all existing buildings, even if they are rehabbed or they destroyed, do. they can still build to their existing height, just right. not higher. Right. So you so got that they, way we tried to keep the balance there that if the B two D and some of the people were concerned about how you know, how high would existing properties has been limited at forty five right. feet shoot back up to 70. You know, Correct, Mr. Rain. And they got, they got that part of it, but they didn't go ahead and follow well, it through. That's the council that is. But only if With the rezoning. Mm -hmm. Right. And it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. I, I am painfully aware of that. Painfully aware. <laughs> exactly. I know. You're aware of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> but this is just another aspect of that rezoning. So uh, did you, anybody else want to speak? <laughs> Larry Payne, co-chair of the Town Business Association. Now all the individual people have spoken. Just like to reaffirm 
the recommendation of that town business association and planning commission was to urge you to resubmit the B2D as initially proposed without the 500 foot requirement. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think the 500 feet makes sense. Only from the standpoint mm -hmm. that it doesn't really. Neither customers nor tenants are going to walk 500 feet. Probably. That's too far. I, you know, my maybe I'm cynical about it, but you know, I so I don't know what real function it performs in a re, in a in a real sense. 500 feet. Uh, we're just picking numbers. Uh, you know, what's the scientific reason for 500 feet? I think they was put in there so that the, there was a requirement to provide parking of some kind, and that's why it was put in there. And it was just I don't I wasn't. Involved but, at the time, so I don't know what the why the five hundred. We should have a basis for why mm -hmm. we're choosing five hundred feet mm -hmm. rather than a thousand feet or. Because the parking feet. parking garage was there, and they were trying to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, probably the strangest thing of all, though, is that it does impact businesses that are already in, it, that already have been able to count the parking garage in the process, and this will then change it to where they won't have the same right to count the parking garage that they did before. So. But there are, then there are other people outside that, that that won't be able to count too. I mean, they, everybody wants to be able to do the same thing, so how can you fix it so they all have the same, same right? This is the problem because well, and it's an odd quandary because mm -hmm. no matter what we do with the limit, there are going to be people who are farther away. I know. Right. What well, that limit is. What's bad for any business district is to have parking lots in the middle of it because that breaks. You'd think they'd work, but it doesn't. Uh, people don't like parking lots, as I recall from this literature I've read, in the middle of things. Uh, and if a downtown business district is cohesive, it's usually zoned all the same. and. I mean, it's strange, or not strange, but it's different for a town of 20-some thousand people to have a parking garage. I mean, I don't think Lancaster owns a parking garage, and there are 35,000 or more. Uh, but we do, and the reason for that was, as much as anything else, was to accommodate the business community. So let the business community use it, is my opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I guess I can make a motion to... That we recommend no change to uh, the parking requirements in the uh, existing B2 district, B2D district, downtown district. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. Was that when we recommended the um, rezoning, did we leave it in the 500 in there? Yeah, we don't have. It's the not there 2D now. does not have any distance requirement for parking. It just says the parking garage may be used for the business. It says in the B2D to meet the parking requirement. And that was saying, leave it as it is. We've got metered parking garage that I think that will serve the community. If we need to make more two-hour parking in there in order to accommodate it, mm -hmm. we can do that. Or three-hour parking, mm -hmm. whatever we, you know, we want to want to pick. Okay. All right. Uh, is there any other discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We want to just leave it the way we have submitted it. Okay. Uh, where are we? Announcements and other business. Do we have any announcements? Yes, we have Do you have other business? You, have any you don't have any other business? What's the matter? <laughs> you always have something. You always have something like that for us. Does anybody, uh, uh, here's the opportunity for citizens to speak about items not covered on the agenda. Who wishes to speak? Nobody wishes to speak. Okay, um, the minutes of the last meeting. Are there enough people here or here who can do this? Yes. You too. You too can do it. I read them and I didn't find anything.
I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of uh, September 20th. Uh, is there a second? second? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, our next meeting is scheduled for what day? October 18th. Okay, um, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Okay, adjourn 346. <coughs>